Hey guys, Turk here. Hope you're having a great one. <laughs> Man, I gotta hand it to you guys. I really do think we ruffled quite a few of y'all's feathers with the 6900 XT video from last week. And I've been talking with y'all down in the comments and it is blatantly apparent that there is some severe doubt when it comes to my interpretations of the leaks as well as what I kind of think the expected specification is gonna be for the cards. And sure enough, throughout the week, we kept getting comments saying that Turk, the teraflops calculations you're doing are just not indicative of in-game performance. And this might surprise you guys, I actually do agree. So rather than staying on this T-flop train, I wanna jump onto a different track and spin what the 6900 XT performance is gonna look like from a different perspective. But then we got the big bomb coming from the Zen 3 announcement. Dr. Lisa Su actually showed us what actual gameplay looks like on the RX 6900 XT or Big Navi. And guys, my jaw dropped. We finally have a yardstick with real hardware, real gameplay, and fortunately, we have data for two of those games at our disposal. Now, today's video was originally going to be showing you guys what the best case FPS is gonna look like when it comes to the 6900 XT, but things have changed now. We're actually gonna be putting both of these models side by side, and we're gonna hopefully come out of this showing which one's the closest to the pin when it comes to the actual performance. So rather than assuming that I'm wrong, let's go ahead and jump into the video. Now, right at the top of the video, I wanna make one thing clear. My performance per watt video I posted several months ago is accurate. This metric is both vague and can be kind of misleading depending on how they decide to use the metric. You know, I made that video when I was comparing the per, uh, PlayStation 5 and we don't really have good FPS values to go off on there, so teraflops was really the next best thing. And sure enough, as we've iterated through some of these videos, my model has been getting refined and it has been proven to be pretty reliable. So what does AMD think performance per watt is? You would think that it would simply be take the frames per second and divide it by the power and you'd be done. Well, it's not that straightforward. So what I did was I went onto the internet and found the RDNA 1 white paper, and I'm gonna go ahead and read some of the spec to you guys, so bear with me. In this instance, performance is defined as the normalized average performance improvement when comparing the Vega 64 to the RX 5700 XT. Power is similar, normalizing the change in power when comparing the Vega 64 to the RX 5700 XT. By using these normalized values and then doing the division math, we are able to come to the 1.5x performance per watt increase. Now, I actually do have the Vega 64 and 5700 XT data. Plugging in those FPS values and wattage, we actually get 1.6 times the performance per watt. So I think we've got a good handle of what we should be expecting. Now you guys know me, I love models. And once we worked the formula out and we're able to get it on the graph, we're able to see the linear relationship when it comes to performance and power. And with this chart, we're actually able to estimate both the normalized as well as the unnormalized uh, performance for any different wattage we wanna use. Now here's the big assumption going into this video. We are assuming AMD is talking with the RDNA 2, the 5700 XT to whatever their top tier graphics card is going to be. So for this video, we're going to be using the 300 watt metric. And when you look it up on the graph, we actually do expect to see right around a two times performance improvement at only a 33% power usage increase. Now I do have some reservations with this graph, mainly, you know, how does it really scale when you start to increase the wattages uh, towards the really high end? But, you know, for the sake of this video, we're gonna just keep it linear and give you guys uh, what we said at the beginning, just the flat out best case scenario for the FPS. For the teraflop methodology comparison, I'm gonna be using my updated Moore's Law is Dead specification from last week's video and plugging it into the model. And just for a quick recap, that's gonna be a 2.05 gigahertz boost clock speed running with 80 compute units and 300 watts for its TDP. And to kind of summarize that in the T-flop number, it's right at 21 teraflops. Now, I actually already had that data in for last week's video, but I simply cut it out for time. And judging by your guys' engagement with the video with thumbs ups, thumbs downs, and comments, I think you guys are ready for it. And thanks to my previous videos, we actually have a plethora of games, resolutions, and graphics cards at our disposal for comparison today. For consistency, we're going to be using the same games as last week. That's going to be Microsoft Flight Simulator, Assassin's Creed Odyssey, Shadow of the Tomb Raider, F1 2020, and Doom Eternal. If you guys want to see more games, make sure to hit me up on Discord. At 1440p, you'll notice that the new performance per watt model in light blue is consistently higher by about 11 percentage points than my previous teraflop-based calculation. 
consumption, and that is expected. You can check a lot of my other videos, but I've been trying to be pretty conservative on my estimations in order to reduce the overhype that could happen. With that, both of the 6900 XTs can outperform the RTX 3080 in most of the games, and even the T-flop calculations are roughly 26 percentage points above the RTX 2080 Ti. Now, how about 4K? Again, the 6900 XT using the FPS performance per watt method performs higher than my previous methodology and sure enough beats the 3080 in most games while my T-flop estimation does tend to fall off in some of the games. Again, the FPS performance per watt metric is about 15% faster than my old method. So does this mean I'm wrong? Pause the video, go down to the comments, let me know what you think. Moving right along. Now to the bombshell teaser from AMD. For this, we're gonna be pulling in our Borderlands and Gears 5 data. Check it out. For Gears 5, my T-flop performance per watt model matches the actual FPS. For Borderlands, the light blue FPS performance per watt model fits the actual performance. Unfortunately, many reviewers do not have Call of Duty at 4K with an RTX 3080 and ray tracing turned off. So I can't put that data into these models. But from what I've gathered, the RTX 3080 does perform significantly better than uh, the actual gameplay performance. And again, if you guys have got that data, make sure to drop it in Discord. I'll give you credit and I'll post it down to Twitter and let everyone know what we've got there. All right, so now we've got a lot of things to consider with this actual performance uh, test benchmark data. And the first thing is all of my data has been collected through Steve over at Hardware Unbox, and he's been running his tests with a 3950X. The actual data that we got in the Zen 3 announcement was with the 5900X. Now you guys might be thinking that the performance with the newer CPU might be better, but if we look at this again, this is at 4K, and given the trends with uh, the 10900K from the reveal, as well as some of Steve's analysis with the 3950 versus 10900K. I don't expect that at this resolution we are CPU limited on these particular games. Now that we have a bit of confidence for both approaches, let's see what they come up with for the 14 game average metric. As expected, my conservative estimates are coming in 12% below the FPS performance per watt model. And herein lies the glories of the model. Guys, I've been very transparent with how I've calculated my FPS performance per watt model, and I've actually have been throwing in some extra percentages into my T-flops per FPS value, mainly to account for any number of unknowns that we just don't know at this time. So if we feel that my model is a little too pessimistic, we can simply reduce some of that offset and get better numbers. But on the flip side, the FPS performance per watt model, we can go up or down depending on what the actual performance per watt turns out to be. It's not about it being exactly right when it comes to these uh, values here, guys. It's all about having the right expectations and a way to modify them given any particular information we get relevant at the time. With all this said, we now have two different approaches for estimating the performance for the 6900 XT, and we're now we're pretty confident that the top-end model that was showed at the Zen 3 announcement is going to be able to compete with the RTX 3080, and that is huge, tremendous news. Now, we can, of course, debate it down in the comments of which model is going to be the most accurate going forward, but guys, I've just wanted to give you this information mainly to just not be parroting what other YouTubers are going out there. I find this a lot more interesting. And of course, I really like math. So if this is the kind of content you like to watch, make sure you hit the subscribe button. And now that Zen 3 is out in the open, we can actually start to make some more prediction videos for that. So if you want to see that, I've got a whole bunch of data here on my other screen, uh, hit the bell icon so you know when that video drops. But again, guys, thank you very much for watching. And of course, thank you for the comments. I really do appreciate it. And I really hope to catch you guys in the next one. So take care, Turk Force.